I was that type of guy that liked to bottle things up, keep everything, um, you know, to myself, try and deal with it on my own. But yeah. then, you know, when like serious things happen, um, it builds I felt, up. I felt it was the right time just to like speak out. Like last season, I was going through like some some things like, off the field and my family and stuff like that. So it was difficult for me to to perform on the field and. I'm very family orientated and um, my mum was going through through some things last year, depression and whatnot like that. So um, she got she went to London um, to get that sorted out. So like, in the meantime, I had to to look after my little brother and sister who's um, 12 and, and 15. So. Oh wow! And then also not telling anybody on the team and having to keep that and then yeah, exactly. So at like the same you say, time. I was still performing and you just get to that point where you just think, nah, I, I've got to actually say something. Like, yeah. I spoke to my like my family and stuff like that. And then, um, you know, I thought, like, today I, need, I just need to speak to them and just, just say how I feel. And it felt so much, like, so much better. Like a massive weight yeah. off. There's a phrase, actually, what does it say? A problem shared is a problem halved. Because every time you've got these thoughts going in your mind, after speaking about it, it doesn't feel half as bad. Even with me, all the stuff that happened in, like, my childhood or when I was a teenager and things, it's not the end of the world, regardless of your situation. How old were you when you... When my dad... Well, when three years old when my dad went to prison and then he was in and out through the rest of my life. And then when I was 16, my boyfriend was murdered. Oh. And then I moved to London and then had to live with a family member, but they were on drugs. So like, Jeez. it was just like a spiral of events that should have completely knocked me off track. For a while, I used to be embarrassed about talking about it and like not want to tell people just in case they looked at you differently yeah. or just even exposing your personal life is just a big deal yeah, as massive, it is. Yeah. So I wouldn't want to, but then as I got older, I realized like me sharing this, there's going to be so many people that have gone through similar things. and like would look at me and be like, wow, if she can deal with that, then mm -hmm. I can go on to do the same thing. I think it's good to, to have someone there to speak to and, and to open up, which, has, which I suggest 100%. Once you see somebody having that conversation, you're like, oh, okay, it's not that bad, I can yeah. talk about it too. But no, with anxiety, I didn't even know what it was. I used to just get like a mad, like sick feeling. You know when you're on a plane and the plane yep. drops? Like out of nowhere, my day would be going fine and then I'm just like, Whoop! and my belly feels weird. Yeah. And there's no actual reason behind it. I'm just living my day and, and there it comes. How do you deal with like the social media side of things? I like, don't know, man. I go, I go through stages. Ages. My job is to talk to people and to be online and mm -hmm. to be this person. So when you can't be that person, you just have to completely lock off. Yeah, I don't like to be on social media that much when mm -hmm. I'm at home. I've just grown up. Yeah. Like, I used to put, I used to put loads of videos on and stuff like that. But um, dancing, dancing and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I used to get, um, I used to get scrutinised quite a bit for, for doing stuff. But that was just being me, being me. But like, that's the worst bit because mm. you're like, I want to just be myself and people yeah. hate you for being yourself. That's what I'm so then it makes you not want to do it anymore. Yeah, I'm more chilled now to be fair on it. Um, no more dancing videos. Yeah, there's a couple. Yeah. <laughs> a couple, a couple <laughs> in the fight. <pile, laughs> I was like, going to say, don't stop doing nah, that nah, completely. Well, I think there's always going to be someone there for you to speak to. Um, you know, and you don't have to do it on camera like us. You can just do it <laughs> to your mate at home or your family member or whoever. It might not even be a family. It might just be someone that, you know, a friend that you really trust. There's a thing as well, <clears throat> which I do sometimes. If I don't wake up feeling good, then, like, just list in everything you're grateful for. Take up all the positives in your life. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't want to sound like Gandhi or anything, but you can just, yeah, you can count your blessings no, it's and not good. focus on the I negative. you have to. Some days you wake up and you're like, oh. Like, nah, it's not it for me today. Worse, yeah. It could be a lot worse. Bam, open the curtains, think, like, jump out of bed. Let's get the day started. A little yeah. learning curves in your life. Like battle wounds that make you yeah. into like a warrior. That's what I'm saying. Basically. Bounce back, become better. Yeah. There's a, oh, I've got quotes for everything and I can't think <laughs> of the bloody quote. But it says, everything's going to be okay in the end. If it's not okay, it's not the end. Love that.